kind of drift back and forth between the different weeks what they want to ban but there is always differences in tech inclusion depending on what it is that you're going to get rid of and most notably the altar of fire i think gives possessi the confidence to leave up demon hunter at the moment though versus hunter i completely agree with getting rid of it all he wants to see is soul rend uh touch of the nathrism and drain soul Absolutely agree. Yeah, I'd think about a backfire as well, but the, the classically good anti-aggro cards, uh, because it's not like you have to find uh, the altar of fire in the top half of your deck, which you can argue is the case uh, versus Demon Hunter, or maybe against Rogue, but less so, I would argue. Um, it's more just about finding it at some point to activate your Bristlebacks and your Baron Scavengers. So finding some way to survive these early turns is the most important thing. Uh, for Surrender on the other side, though, I'm obviously thinking First Instinct, Volpertinger and, uh, Volpertinger and Mancrick you're holding on to. But is there anything deeper going on here? Are there more important early game cards you're looking to find? Um, you can make an argument for Guardian Og Merchant as being a really good one versus Handlock and mm. Cult Neophyte, both of them for similar reasons, right? They're disrupting removal and particularly Soul Rend. Uh, but because he doesn't necessarily have a good target for Guardian Og Merchant this early, I don't mind him just keeping Vulpertinger and Mancrick and not getting too greedy because this is still an above average curve. Now, however, Surrender has picked up many different avenues to this. He could go for a full zoo game plan with two one drops in into a two drop into Mancrick. He could go for a coin two into two game plan. Uh, or he could coin or he could go one into coin three. Of all of those, I most dislike the coin two into two game plan because yeah. you want to time the neophyte for uh, turn four better, I think. Oh I I guess you could theoretically go coin two, because as we said, Felmore is better the sooner you play it. And then one one, and then even though it floats a mana, neophyte on three? I don't hate that game plan. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Honestly, so many different ways that Surrender yeah. could have done it. I only outlined three, but he is going for the fourth option that you mentioned here. Going Companion first to see what pops out. Shima, I, I honestly don't know which one was the best one in this situation, because just having a durable minion seems okay as well. Uh, there's still Mortal Coil for Possessi, so having that have a bit more health is not a downside. Very true. Uh... Hmm, weird turn here for Possessi where I always have to retrain my brain because I always ignore Bristleback as a playable card. But here, it's not bad, right? Just to put a minion in the way of the Felmore, even if it does get value traded. Uh, but the problem is, of course, then you're making it so that you can't play Null on the following turn. Unstable Shadow Blast becomes a little awkward. It's a very difficult turn, actually. If he taps, he can get closer to Soul Rend, which is obviously the perfect yeah. solution to this board state. But if he misses, then he's taking so much damage in the meantime. I do favor playing a minion into Felmo. And between Neophyte and the Bristleback, I prefer the Bristleback. Because in the case where the Felmo goes face, the Bristleback can take a value trade. Maybe even eats an aim shot from Surrender. Uh, it does have to go face, though, here. You don't want it to trade because the 5-1 Felmo is going to be tough for uh, Possessi to deal with without a Mortal Coil does trade though surrender arguably getting the good hit for the first time so far today uh on the felmore i'm sure it doesn't feel like that now but i think that was pretty good in this one instance it is good for him because he doesn't know what possessi's hand is right like yeah. surrender's thinking oh if it's soul rend like four health is just better to have i mean uh four health and one health is the same anyway so it's better that i go face um no soul rend, and he has Neophyte to shut down that possibility anyway, and now he's picked up a tracking so he doesn't have to float a mana. So I do prefer Neophyte and tracking here. Agreed. It's easily enough damage to worth uh, to make it worth protecting here. Even if they have, like, tap touch of the Nathrezim in the best case scenario for them, or, like, coil plus Nathrezim, double Nathrezim, whatever it may be, you still have a pretty reasonable board on the follow-up. Uh, and so this is just could not be more perfectly of a time neophyte. I guess the one thing he's thinking would be whether or not you play tracking, but he's just taking the risk, calling Possessi's bluff and saying, you don't have it. He doesn't have it. He does not. Dang, that's so brave from Surrender, but as soon as he sees the backfire, he's like, yes, I just win now. Possibly true. The upside of going Mancrick here 
is that you play the tracking after man creep so there's a better chance that you can find the wife in the near future again i don't think that was that possible upside was worth not playing around soul ren but <laughs> andrew clearly disagrees uh yeah i definitely want to track now though Yes, exactly. With tracking, you can hit either the wife, which is obviously incredibly powerful, but aim shot itself is not that bad, just to guarantee it with the Barrett Coda Bane next turn. Uh, in addition to just the normal plethora of good cards being basically anything that can go face at this point. That's right. Depending on what he gets in the tracking, I wouldn't be surprised to see Surrender just aim a qu an aim shot face immediately as well. Um, maybe it ends up being Neophyte, even though it doesn't necessarily shut down Solrend. Maybe he doesn't feel like he can just win off of Burn by then, but it all starts with tracking, and we'll see what happens after, in my opinion. I mean, you, you could get away with Neophyte Hero Power on this turn, right? Given that you have a 50-50 to hit the wife next turn anyway of the Barrett Kodo Bane, it's not necessarily uh, having to be the play here, given how good uh, Hero Power is every turn. It's close True. though. True. I just kind of think Surrender has the type of hand where, like, you don't need to weave it in. You're dealing way more damage by playing mm. cards in the near future. And as Hunter, while it's good in some instances to get the most damage over a longer window by weaving in the hero powers against a deck with this much healing that is specifically timed, especially when they can hit 10 cards in deck, that I'd rather just surrender power through as much damage in a shorter time as possible, which kind of implies uh, just playing spells here. The Barak Kodo Bane for next turn seems really strong. He did go Neophyte rather than Aim Shot, which in the world where Possessi doesn't have Soul Rend makes the other removal options quite awkward here. There is the possibility for Touch plus Unstable, but that's a lot of mana wasted. And realistically, for Possessi to win this game, I think next turn it feels like he needs to hit the uh, bottom portion of his deck and activate these Bristlebacks, one of which is, of course, in the raised Deadpool. But how he actually gets there is pretty tough. He has to tap into exactly Alter or uh, the Backfire, I guess, that you could go for next turn, but then Mana is very tight as well. And so he's just going for... Uh, the Null, the Touch, the Nathrism, I can understand it because it does at least remove some of the damage and maybe he can buy himself one extra turn before he has to go for the burn his own deck strategy. Was Essie deliberately going for leaving a 3-4 on board rather than a 3-2 in order to maintain one more health on his Null? I think that's decent because uh, the oh. OK hits the 50-50 surrender. He's so happy! You can't tell me this guy's completely burnt out of Hearthstone. He wants to win Worlds. <laughs> oh, he wants to win, yeah. I mean, I, I, from what it sounded like, it wasn't that he's lost the uh, the passion for competition or even that he's necessarily quitting competitive Hearthstone. It's just the... Uh, uh, isn't gelling with Grandmasters right now. Uh, but in terms of the competitive spirit, still clearly there for Surrender. And in terms of this choice that you're looking at, Obviously, if you double trade, you're playing around the soul rend somewhat, but he just has so much burn damage. I think you're allowed to point this face. Okay, if you point at face, they go soul rend. Uh, you have to deal 16, but in the worst case scenario, the soul rend clears enough minions that the bristleback is active then. True. And then yeah. that's the scariest point. So I still like the trade here. Um, and that's Possessi being rewarded for his option to leave up Mancrick rather than Neophyte, right? Because both Volpertingers had to trade into the three, uh, the Gold Chiron to get rid of it. Okay. Quest progression, gonna keep tapping. Still looking for another altar or backfire, but there's Soul Ren only dealing with two minions, but we'll probably that's... take it. Still pretty good, actually. You can go Soul Rend this turn, which brings you down to 14 cards, and then Altar of Fire alone brings you down to that 10 card breakpoint next turn, and then double Bristleback with another Raise Dead is keeping you alive, but you have to survive till that point. I really like this at this point because the alternative would have been playing like Noel and Shadow Blast or something, mm. which you don't want any more minions in the raid set pool. You just want to guarantee yourself Bristlebacks. I don't think Possessi necessarily plays Raise Dead here because um, if he goes down to 10, well, actually, Surrender. 
uh, wouldn't have had lethal with six mana, right? But You'd gone down just to ten. No. Yeah. Um, it's ten, including the man Craig attack. <laughs> right. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Then yes, you are correct. Okay, but no reason to play the raise that immediately either. Uh, he's seen a neophyte surrender at this stage. I'd be interested in getting the adorable infestation damage face while you can. And so probably the rest of the turn is like aim shot hero power. And then next next turn you give yourself quick shot, quick shot hero power. That's true. Yeah, it's just about how you want to present minions because you know there to be one bristle back in hand you know one to have been burned as well uh but having like a one one on board does mean that touch of the nathrism potentially gets more healing as well it's really tough as to how you're supposed to play versus not play minions so i think here he's getting the one damage off the uh uh adorable infestation at that point saying okay i'm already playing minions so i may as well just go for the extra three two in the hope that you can't clear it play the quick shot he now has 10 burst damage on the following turn, but Possessi has multiple ways now to claw himself out of range. This is the turn. Yep, Altar of Fire Insta. Okay, after the race, that Insta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so you can go double Bristleback plus Giant, obviously, is what I'm most heavily looking at. That surely keeps you alive 100% of the time. Yeah, yep, it does. Despite Surrender optimizing the turn, with my line of play, he would have like floated some mana the following turn without any other burst spells drawn. So he just decided to weave in some more minions on board, but it is not enough against the giant swing back turn from Possessi. That's not good enough. It's not, is it? He's got uh, 10 burst, 11 with the 1-1 one, one as well. He can go for... Warsong Wrangler for Rhino, and then next turn still just not get there because of all the lifesteal on the piggies, healing turn after turn. Rindling's Rifle for lifesteal doesn't... Oh, sorry, for Freezing Trap, sorry, to isolate the Flesh Shine. I don't think gets there either. Just not seeing it. Um, he can play Aim Shot, Quick Shot on uh, the minions. Yuck. And then Felmore? Uh, I guess? I can't think of anything better, Derek. I'm sorry. Me neither. Uh, I mean, I guess the alternative is just to go for that freezing trap on Rindlings. You can go quick shot on one of the boars and then Rindlings rifle plus the Marsul cub to take out the other and hope that freezing the giant keeps you alive for enough turns. <laughs> but if you have to hit a lifesteal twice, you're never killing them anyway. Probably so you just not, take yeah. freezing here, right? And then say that you either have to freeze a lifesteal or a giant outside, but yeah. he knows about the Noel in hand, so it doesn't work either. Also, he just doesn't hit the freezing because Surrender's not been very lucky on this base hunter. <laughs> he sure hasn't, has he? And there with whoa, Scavenger off the top as well, just for a little bit of extra defense. It's looking super clean here for Possessi. Mm. Noel, have that freeze back into the hand. And play Drain Soul and the Baron Scavenger. Why oh, is he going giant for? Wow. He's not. He just doesn't respect Freezing Trap at all. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess saying he can play it back for one mana anyway, right? So he doesn't necessarily care that he's losing damage immediately. Oh, fair. Yeah, I forgot how cheap the giants are. <laughs> yeah. Or probably zero actually, because the uh, Bristleback would get to attack as well. So I think this is this was uh, just fine for possessing. And then you don't even attack because of the fear of snakes or pack tactics. Yep, very smart. That's my bad there. Um, yeah, that's just game number two. It is, and a rough start for Surrender. It was looking like he might be able to squeak in his uh, most difficult of wins with uh, the face hunter right out of the gate with uh, an aggressive start, holding off on the neophyte, obviously taking a big risk uh, and still not getting punished. It was not the way that you and I would have approached it, but it looked like the, uh, the risk he took may have paid off. But still, for Possessi, this Altar of Fire version of the deck is just too strong. It's wrecking aggro. 
Yeah, it's been amazing. I just can't think of a mashup where Altar of Fire is bad then because we've talked about how it can be good versus Demon Hunter. It, it can be a card that wins you the game just by itself. Yep. Um, it's good against aggro because you get closer to the Blood Shard Bristleback activation and it is good against every other deck for the same reason. I yeah. can't believe that this wasn't an auto-include from the very beginning, but we have to take our hats off to Alan in particular, who pioneered it in APAC at least. Well, here we go. Moving on to game two. It means that Possessi is left with after his Demon Hunter was banned, his Rogue and his Druid being the spice in his lineup. The Aggro Druid as opposed to the Anaconda version that was much more popular over the last few weeks. Um, what is it, in your opinion, that has led to such a surge in Aggro Druid here in the APAC region? Is it like the balance patches or just a realization of where the meta actually sits? I would say more towards realization. And even then, it's not as though this is just the secret deck that everybody should be bringing from this point on. It's maybe just our players kind of thinking there's certainly going to be Rogue and Demon Hunter in most lineups. They're just the best decks right now. And if our players have chosen to ban Rogue, then you would want to position the rest of your decks to have at least a leg up versus Demon Hunter. And Aggro Druid does, in my opinion. Um, it has enough disruption tools, waves of threat, Mm. and a uh, possibility to make them afraid of Arbor Up that it can get that matchup done pretty cleanly. More so than I would say a deck can target Rogue pretty cleanly. I think that's reasonable. And here for Possessi, another one of those strange starting hands, right, where Oracle of Elun, we've seen it be the absolute backbone of the deck, the thing that gives it its juice. But in these aggro matchups, is it fast enough to play a three mana two four generally no i would say um in aggro matchups i'd love to hold a loon for when you can immediately get value with her mm. so either you hold coin on turn three you play that with a one drop or you just toss it back hope you get it around turn five play with a two drop and i think that later option is much more reasonable because holding coin for that long versus aggro doesn't tend to happen. I am interested in Park Panther though. I know I brought this wow. up before in this matchup. If, like you have the coin um, and obviously it's still going to have to wait till turn three, but the responsive capability of that is just unlike anything else in the deck. Wow, it's the one okay. card he tosses, though, holding on to Peasant <laughs> Brawler. Okay, so I guess it's just like a curve game plan here. Rely on just playing minions on curve being good enough. It's uh, it's not especially aspirational, because Druid can, of course, do much more powerful things than this. But maybe it's just on average good enough against oh. Hunter. Yo, Serenor's just been drawing Rhino without Wranglers all day, Yeah, it feels like. Uh, but... He does at least have quick shot to get rid of the peasant, put some face damage and challenge Ooh. what Possessi wants to do, which is Bone Chewer Brawler. Oh yeah, this is a bold oracle, but I respect it. If there's not a couple of pretty precise answers, then this is just absolutely popping oh. off, tracking off the top, keeps the dream alive for Surrender to be able to answer it, because if he can't, he is in major trouble. He wants the AI, not the Arcane Intellect, but the adorable infestation, <laughs> and there it is. The absolute nuts. Perfect mana utilization, taking a value trade, even piercing shot next turn is fine just to kill something on the other side and keep all this damage going face. Possessi's game plan of decent minions on curve at the moment looking absolutely disastrous. Innervate tech, pretty decent at least to let him get something on board, but as it Great. happens, Surrender's hand is just begging for a target for Piercing Shot because he certainly doesn't want to shoot his own minions in this matchup, so works out nice for Surrender here. Hmm. Maybe uh, you deviate to Aim Shot because Possessi does have high health minions in the deck like Teacher's Pet and Greybow. That's true, but... Can you have any kind of a read on those not being in hand? Innovate was just used the turn before it could be baited out next turn. I don't know if that's necessarily a good read because Possessi does actually have a good five mana play and decided not to give himself the capability to coin it out or bait it out. Uh, but I think this is fine for Surrender. Just use the more expensive card while you can. Yeah, fair enough. Um, in the world where there's Teacher's Pet, 
next turn. Like, he would have a pre-developed Rhino also yep. against Greybow, so he's saying it's fine if that happens. I hate to say it, Dark, but I'd love to have a Park Panther like last True. two turns ago. I just feel like on the coin, I'm so pessimistic as Druid. I feel like I always have to respond, or even as Hunter too, if I were on the coin and had some capability to keep a more reactive card, I'd go for it. Oh. Uh, trample, trample. Sounds good to me. Gets to protect the Rhino as well. And even if a poisonous happens here, Surrender is still safe. And I guess you're probably trading, right? Arbor up is where things maybe go wrong. But I guess actually, if they play Arbor up, what happens? You just kind of win Kill next them. turn, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we face her every day of the week. Fair enough. Um, if Park Panther happens, it's fine. It only trades yep. the 5-4 and he still has to face tank the Rhino a lot of the time to kill it. And sure. you have seven damage in hand. So if a Rhino can attack twice, that's lethal. Even if, you know, you, you have a very strong read that their hand is pure garbage because they went hero power pass on turn four. But even if they were to go like Oracle, Bone Chewer plus a Taunt, like you're still just killing them in the next turn or two uh, with the Rhino. It's just too much damage. So I absolutely agree. Even if there's a million Taunts, you're just pushing for lethal. And... Uh, Possessy deciding just to break the spectator one final time uh, <laughs> before he concedes this game. Surrender looks like he's going to be getting the win with his face under a monumental victory. That is right. Finally, not having to have it as the last deck in his lineup to get a win. Um, mm -hmm. It means that both our players will have a win on the board. Possessy without the handlock now. We're looking at the potential for Surrender's Demon Hunter to get some work done, but I was saying that this is probably Possessy's soft target with the lineup. I, w I say that because he has the Druid. Um, and the Warlock with the Altar of Fire, but I don't think that the Garot Rogue has anything special in there to improve the Demon Hunter matchup. Agreed. I uh, yeah, I think that things are just looking a little rocky now for Possessi as, you know, e even in regards to Rogue versus Warlock, as time has gone on, I'm just coming around more and more to the idea that the Warlock is in a very reasonable spot in the matchup. We've seen players utilizing their mana very efficiently in the early turns, pretty much purely to cheapen their Giants. Any opportunity that you have to play uh, Unstable Shadow Blast, Touch of the Nathrezim, Drain Soul, even Bristle back if it gets attacked into to heal. Anything that changes your health total on your turn to get cheaper Flesh Giants is how you win the matchup, because then you take one big swing turn uh, to... Uh, play all your Giants, play the Neophyte, and then Rogue simply can't answer. So I like Surrender's position in his one final shot of the World Champs where it's come all the way through the loser's bracket to be able to get here. I think his dreams are still very much alive. Zessi is going to switch on to the Rogue of his own though. Um... Zessi, Alutamu, and Glory have constantly been playing Penflinger, but they have experimented with two copies and one One Thief, two copies of Penflinger, zero One Thief, play Foxy Fraud instead. But I think the final iterations for this playoff week have been either two copies of Penflinger or two copies of One Thief, and it's just yeah. one copy of the other. Possessi and Alutamu have the same list, I think, and it's Glory that has gone for... Oh, no, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It's Alutamu that's gone for the double pen flinger. It's Possessia and Glory that like the double one thief. Yeah, man, Alutamu has given them the old uh, bait and switch here, it feels like, with him going with the uh, the aggro druid. I'd be curious to know if they did prep together this week, knowing that it is obviously uh, very possible they go up against each other in that spot at the World Championships, and if it's just... Uh, philosophy from previous weeks carrying over to lead them to a very, very similar lineup, or if still they are giving uh, some thoughts together, because uh, they have ended up with uh, different lineups overall between pretty much all the players, or at least subtle differences uh, between their overall lineups, with uh, Alutem and Possessi going with the Aggro Druid, Glory going with the Face Hunter, but either way, all of that is to be played out tomorrow when Glory and Alutemu play. For now, it's still Possessi Surrender, looking like another close nail-biting series. It's been uh, a very long day already to this point. Europe should have started three minutes ago, but still, Gia, <laughs> we are powering on with what has been such a close day. And Alutemu, oh, Possessi, even my goodness, I'm getting confused, getting himself a lightning hand. That is the juice. 
It's not lightning fast, but you don't want to be necessarily lightning fast versus handlock. Like you want to get the best discount or the most discounts possible, and that's oh, yeah. what the Octobot does. Turbo card draw, coin shroud into shroud, oh. prep swindle at some point. That's just perfect. I was going to say the one problem with this hand is sometimes you don't get either a good activator oh. for the swindle or you have too many cards, but the prep solves that. And gets the field contact as well. This is the absolute perfect hand for Possessi. Now we just need to not see any meltdowns. Just play this hand. You've been given the easy hand because it's so easy to draw through your deck and kill them before they go for the big giant plus neophyte turn. Good that Possessi's taking time to consider here because we do have a Kazakus that could be thrown into the mix yes. here um, that could be taken for a one cost and have that discounted to zero. But hand space starts to become an issue if it's just Kazakus. So let's see what Possessi goes for. My instinct here would just be prep swindle and then Kazakus proc. Uh, the swindle is very likely to give him a procker that's not prize plunderer. Because, oh, do you mean a feel, uh, Octobot pro? Octobot, pro, yes. Yes, yeah, 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 I agree. <laughs> uh, otherwise, you are overdrawing cards. And uh, I fully agree. You can consider, obviously, holding on to prep swindle to go with the field contact. But I think you're very often running into hand space issues then. So I fully agree. I'd like to draw the cards, discount them, then go with a, a, a big Octobot turn. Because this turn five with a Ooh. shadow step as well is just going to be so strong. Possessi will very possibly be down to like 10 cards left in deck heading into turn six maybe less even oh my god yeah turn six is the earliest we've seen the garot rogue lethal here in apac can he break the record i don't think so but turn six by itself is still very impressive um surrender playing the bristle back i really like as well on turn yeah. three because that can cheapen his giant just by sticking around Exactly, yeah. As long as you're fitting in a whole bunch of uh, taps as well, uh, it's perfectly fine, in my opinion, to go with those because, as you said, it's just about flipping your health total up and down, up and down, up and down to try and make Giant playable. As for the rest of this turn from Possessi, it's a little bit awkward because he's discounted two Garots, which you don't necessarily want to see this early. I don't want him to use the prize blender, honestly. Just save that for field contact fuel, because if not, the only real battle cry he wants to play is Neophyte. The Kazakh is too expensive. I think the one thing I was interested on that turn was Shadow Step Octobot, though, uh, because it's obviously still potentially the play with field contact on the following turn, but I imagine with the amount of cards you're going to draw next turn, finding the second one is pretty likely. Uh, and then often in these kind of games, having extra mana available with the Octobot is the most important factor. It could be, but with the other Octobot in hand, I kind of like that he's leaving himself the option to okay. step field contact or Octobot next turn because like, he would have floated one mana by stepping this Octobot anyway. As for Surrender though, um, as long as this gets lifesteal, I'm happy with the turn. Um, only minion in the race dead pool, right? Is, is there Tor a as a I think it's Tor Guide right now because he did a oh. zero mana tap earlier on. Okay, then that's great. Just playing race dead super aggressively like this, get the giant down yeah. as fast as possible. I really like in this situation. Uh, Surrender still kind of needs to find his own Neophyte at some point, but for now he can get the another run and a giant. That's pretty impressive. I was not expecting that powerful of a turn from Surrender because turn five, having a giant down for one mana, that's the kind of play that you need to be making to come back against a start like this for Possessi. But let's see the turn coming down now for Possessi. We're looking at very possibly a Octobot as well. You have to be a little bit careful, obviously, in terms of what you're shadow stepping. Uh, but I'm kind of interested in it here just to play as many cards as possible. Do you want to go Octobot and proc the Octobot with the Guardian Aug Merchant? Yeah, I guess Wouldn't maybe. You really have mana to play anything else except Prize Plunderer from that point, right? Fair enough, yeah. Uh, don't shoot that. Uh, I think <laughs> we, we want to target enemy minions here. There we go. Is this just three cards played so far? So Prize Plunderer is just going to get this down to five, but I think this could be a step Prize Plunderer, honestly. Not the craziest thing I've ever heard. Oh, that's very nice though. Wow. Yeah. Sure. 
This is insane. By managing to stick the Divine Shield on the Field Contact as well, it's so tough for Surrender to kill it. I mean, he it has really Soul is. Rend, but because of the Neophyte, he can't play that with the Gold Channel. That touch is so clutch, though. <laughs> It is the clutch touch with the uh, the gold giant null to be able to take it out. Uh, in terms of the rest of the mana that you're spending on this turn, it could be tap, null, touch of the Nathrezim, and end with tour guide to lead into uh, zero mana tap on the following turn. Yeah. It's really not great because the incremental yeah. damage you leave to Possessy is scary. Like, he could go for a lethal next turn, honestly, even if it's not guaranteed. Uh, just because... Um, Surrender can only heal up to 27, and there will still be uh, 9 on the board the other side. And he already has both Garots, Ethel, and the Octobot. Um, but yeah, that's very true. leaving up the field contact is like guaranteed lethal, I think. You will lose if you leave up the field contact. I think it's almost guaranteed uh, at this point. I think he's maybe taking an alternate route. He can go like Tour Guide, Tap, Null, Touch, and then Tour Guide at the end is the other way you yeah. can go about it, which is, I think, probably better here because yeah. uh, you don't have time to you know wean out all the extra benefits of tapping first here before the tour guide you'd rather just have an extra one one yeah i agree i like the optimization from surrender here and he has left kind of an annoying board for possessy himself to deal with um let's right. take a look at what's left in possessy's deck you kind of really want penflinger honestly for this board state so the one thing I'm afraid of here for Possessi is if you play the Octobot now and you don't have enough health to apply your spell damage to uh, once the end state comes down here. So it looks like he's just starting off with Passage. Eight cards in hand right now, so he does need to be a little bit careful about any card draw he's going for. Uh, but more likely, I think we're just going to cool. see dump as many cards as possible. But even here, double one thief already overdraws him a card unless he wants to prep out one of the spells. I think that's reasonable. Okay. Because the field contact will make him overdraw, but does he yeah. actually need anything left in his deck? There's still another Shadow Step and Ethereal, so yeah, he can't quite dump the contact, but uh, Biscuit, okay. Okay, there we go. Dump Flurry, or prep Rune Dorp. What, uh, I guess it has to be dump the uh. Flurry, just so you don't overdraw. And then dump the Flurry, prep Mana Biscuit. That seems pretty strong to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's perfect. A lot of actions left, though. Did he get it through? It's a bit of a complex turn, that one. Okay. Maybe he missed Dagger, might... shake of the head. <laughs> yeah, and I think he missed an attack with the Prize Plunderer as well. Uh, but the important thing is he didn't overdraw. He got the Mana Biscuit in hand. That was a pretty good yeah. turn. Mm -hmm. All he needs now is to draw the Field Contact. And uh, he's got the... Window to give him another shot. There's still three minions, though, aside from it. Just That's an absolutely surrender. dreadful turn, though, for Surrender. He can go Soul Rend Scavenger, I guess, but with no Neophytes, no Raised Deads, or I guess both Raised Deads used, sorry. He just doesn't have enough a way to apply enough disruptive pressure. Yeah, I don't think so. So far, oh, one Neophyte burned. Noel. Oh. I, uh, oh. Okay. Um, the start of this turn could potentially even be Kazakas, right? Because he's never dead next turn. Okay, yeah, sure. I was so thinking you, you start brain freeze, but Kazakas makes sense. You can give yourself another turn to draw the contact naturally. If you True. take Kazaka's 5 cost, you can play it because you have Biscuit and also play the Brain Freeze. Just clear that from your hand. And next turn, you can go for a Swindle play if need be. Would you rather just play Swindle now? You can just go 1 cost Golem, play that, and go Freeze plus Swindle, save the Biscuit. True. I really don't think he needs the Biscuit to win the game. Um... But it's kind of like the argument for playing Swindle is you, uh, I mean, this turn is that you've got it done and the mana spent out of the way and you can still dump a Neophyte in that case. So I don't think it's bad. Yeah, I think the problem is just, is just that if you go with this line, you're potentially afraid of the second Neophyte. You've obviously seen one burn. Um, but you do need to be careful with hand space. And so, okay, it's going to be Golem first, Poison Freeze 2, sure. 
Are you afraid of second new? I mean, there's like Octavot proc. Each Garot will still cost one if there's another new. If I, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, I guess right, if you have to play what if you have to play first, Swindle as well? Yeah, yeah if you don't draw enough. the contact. Okay, well, Surrender has a uh, <laughs> lot of piggies, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, he can go to market, but uh, I don't think that's going to necessarily get him there with these three little piggies. Not bringing him. <laughs> <laughs> but the important thing is he can set up lethal by playing the piggies because he can have battle master conga line, right? <laughs> the things that this game makes us say. <laughs> okay, what a we mean by conga that conga line to win the game. <laughs> yeah. What we mean by that is obviously Battle Master is only applying Wind Fury to two minions at a time, but after two minions have attacked, you can drain soul yep. one bristle back and have the other one do the Wind Fury. So it's twenty four if nothing is touched here from Possessi, but I think he's pretty likely to win the game on the spot. That expression tells me he missed on the field contact. That's okay. So there's you two just cards pieces. left in deck. Mm -hmm. Field contact, secret passage. Does he win the game next turn no matter what? Not necessarily, no. right? No. Because if you have if you drop field, uh, secret passage, then um, you're not actually able to draw all the bleeds from your deck after playing the Garot. And if you play secret passage to play bleeds manually, you can only play four of them. Or you might be able to do some really weird play though, where you like play the gift of uh, sorry, play your octobot, reduce the cards, give it spell damage, play Penflinger, and then if Penflinger bounces back to your hand with the secret passage, and then you draw field contact, you can then play the other bleeds, proc the field contact with the Penflinger, oh. and then maybe draw the rest. Like there's oh. potentially still silly lethals that you can achieve next turn, but the much more easy play is just draw field contact. Wait, I think he might have it even with just Secret Passage. Sorry, I, there's three spell damage. I forgot there's still a Shadow Step here. So Garot Garot is already 10 damage. And then you play four more Garots from the Passage. Each of them deals five that's damage. True. I think that's exactly 30. <laughs> Good point, actually, yeah. But not versus Neophyte. All those bleeds are too expensive. So that's clutch that for Surrender That is a very here. clutch draw. I don't think it prevents Field Contact lethal, but it prevents the other lethal. Guaranteed. Oh man, again, I'm wondering if there's any really stupid way you can get there with like Octobot and then like proc it, bounce the Octobot, proc it again with the pen flinger after it bounces back to hand and reduce the uh, maybe the cards in your deck. But oh, yeah, you got the easy way. one. <laughs> if, if we just erase this field contact, replace it with a secret passage, send the screenshot to X Blize, I would love to see what he comes up with. <laughs> But here I think now, it this might is still simple. have been there. Maybe. Maybe. Either way, as you say, this I think is much, much simpler. It just needs to draw two cards with the field contact, which he can do very happily with Shadow Step. That, play it again. Garot, Garot, Penflinger. That's lethal. Game four coming in hot. Possessy 2 1 up now. And the rogue getting through is such a big deal, Gia. Definitely is. Um, this matchup has been tricky for ages. I honestly think it is rogue favored after all the nerfs have settled and handlock has gotten yeah. the shorter end of the stick. Um, Garot rogue. I'm pretty pleasantly surprised that we've arrived at a point in the meta where it's not clearly the best deck, even though people were already saying it was the best deck before everything else got nerfed. Pretty cool. I think yeah. people are just learning how to play against it better. But against this type of play from Possessi, just very, very cleanly done, even though there was a bit of maybe missed damage with minions with the dagger there, he got the priorities right, right? He made sure he didn't overdraw, gave himself the best chance to find field contact, gave himself an extra turn, and we are going to game four after Possessi comes back from a bathroom break. <laughs> yeah, we're going to game four. I don't know if Possessi is necessarily, as he is just uh, out of here as soon as that game's over. It's not over yet, Possessi. Still one more game to go, or maybe two, obviously, depending on whether or not he can win this next one. Uh, I don't know if he will have locked in his next game, but 
apparently already has. It's going to be the Druid this time against the Warlock. And the version that Possessi has is uh, a little bit different to the other versions that we have seen today, specifically from Alan, uh, where Possessi has got himself uh, the double far watch post build in exchange for cutting the neophytes from the list and of course cutting the nature studies which can be a big deal against warlock yeah definitely feels like it um we did see a very very tense game between possessi and alan and in the handlock versus agro druid matchup where possessi has or was it alan who just left up watch post for ages it was yeah yeah, that one was really, really cool. Possessi still managed to clutch it out at the end um, just by building resilient board after resilient board, holding on to Elun as a big refill mechanic alongside the Razor main battle guard, um, and just making sure that he always managed to get card draw where possible. Weaving in Peasant in an awkward position, playing composting and not getting too greedy with it, I find is very important in this matchup because the Warlock can go for Soul Rend at any point and that is the card that completely blows up your efforts. Yep, just deletes pretty much anything you can do with a very limited amount of burst, often very limited amount of refill. But we have seen that, it, you know, this deck gets a reputation for being pretty easy to play, which is, I think, to an extent true. You know, you do just play your best minions on curb for the most part. But from Alan in particular earlier today, we did see that balance that he's always striking between holding back just enough stuff to refill and playing just enough stuff to the point where you are actually threatening some damage. Possessy here with a really interesting mulligan though, hitting the battle guard, fantastic, the best card in any starting hand, but throwing the mule, okay, you kind of want to draw that to get two of them, and holding on to composting as well. I can't understand holding on to composting because I've said how important it is to like layer that on one of your boards to make sure that Soul Ren doesn't completely gas you out. But tossing the pack mule I find surprising because I want to play the composting on the copied minion from Battle Guard. Yeah. And leads okay. up into just Peasant on turn two, I guess trying to keep his Battle Guard saved for if he gets Oracle of a Loon, maybe? Yeah, it feels like it. I mean, it's just really not even that safe on turn two, right? Insta Drain Soul. Yeah. You'd even play Unstable Shadow Blast on that if the opportunity arose. Is that he gets? Okay. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> now we're He's talking. Looking at the juice on turn five, right? He can go yeah. a Luan Battle Guard coin one cost minion, which is actually a five cost minion. <laughs> So I love this play here, just getting down some amount of stats, getting the card draw, even the uh, the uh, acorns in the deck are a pretty big deal to be able to re uh, fill up a board and uh, keep constantly threatening the Warlock, who now has to go for uh, Null plus Drain Soul, I guess? I wonder if he has to clear both. Like, what if he just leaves the the squirrel oh, wow. and only kills the peasant? You can fit in the tour guide. That's true. Yeah, I I think now you're probably going for the kill. Right, leaving a five two minion in play is pretty good. Even if there's Park yeah. Panther, uh, all it can do is just rush in. Yeah, agreed. Um, I do like from Possessi that he went for the composting even if it's just two minions though because he already has quite a bit of draw gotten from the Peasant and all he was making sure is wow. that he can at least get some measure of card draw because he's leading up into a bigger turn later. Uh, Surrender goes for the play I was talking about though. I, I did agree in the end that I like the 5-2 being un intact on board but the upside of not immediately killing Squirrel is that it's less likely that the acorns pop out in the near future because there's going to be draws from the composting. So I think Surrender's just trying to delay the refill a bit more. Was that really just sack the squirrel in? Like, I know it draws a card, but Park Panther there looked so good, right? You can just swing in, kill off the 5-2 with your uh, damage as well. I kind of would rather just have the squirrel in play because of Arbor up in the next turn. It's potentially a better play than the uh, Oracle double Grey Bow play. I agree. A bit surprised. I just kind of want Possessi to maintain a board that tries to bait out a Soul Rend, right? Because yeah. the Oracle play is not especially safe to Soul Rend. So um, 
I guess teacher's pet being copied is quite good because you'll still have two minions spawned at the end of it, but Surrender is approaching the point where he can soul rend and drain soul at the same turn. Uh, right now, though, I think the drain soul is reserved for the park panther. This raise dead gives him null. Pretty good. Uh, and tour, tour guide, guide, which is... That is pretty good. You could do it first. Go like... Raise dead, null, tap, tour guide. Maybe even fit in a giant alongside it, actually, is quite interesting. Uh, not with the drain soul too, right? Well, I don't know where his quest is at. Let's see. Uh, he just completed the first uh, level, but even then, you'd like, kind of rather get an 8-8 eight -eight in play, right? Uh, close. Very close. Those Neophyte instead, Possessies had coin this entire time, so fair enough. It does make yeah. Possessies turn a lot more awkward because he can't go for the big Aluin and a one cost, five cost. <laughs> oh my god, that sounds so stupid saying that. <laughs> <laughs> And to be fair to Surrender, I think he probably had the read on that, right? His opponent kept a card in their starting hand, kept two cards actually in their starting hand, hasn't played the coin up until now. You have to have a pretty good read on what the combo is. And you know if you uh, are well-versed with this deck, with this matchup, it's six mana that is the big power play. So denying the coin, absolutely. It's so clutch here, buying himself that one extra turn. Would also deny an innervate, which Possessy runs in his deck, and it True. forces Possessy onto playing either Greybow or Teacher's Pet, which is a big deal because that's one less minion that's sticky into the Soul Rend. Yeah, yep, Surrender happily moving along towards his ultimate win condition of the Baron Scavenger coming down for one. Another on just short of being played for one here, but the turn is still pretty good. Just unstable Shadow Blast, Flash Giant. Maybe you play a touch depending on what pops out of the teacher's pet. Oh man, that was a close play because this was obviously the punish of starting with Tour Guide. If he'd kept that in hand, even though it would have cost one extra mana and denied him a 1 1, he could have played a Nether on Flesh Giant and then even ended with a, uh, a Tour Guide at the end. So now he has to placate himself with, as you were saying, just make some trades, hope for the best, and end with Flesh Giant. <laughs> I'm very placated by that. I think it's a good play. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It. It's, pr it's probably still the correct line that he had because there were other cards that get better. Uh, but it's not the absolute nuts. True enough. Yeah. Gonna feel bad if he floats one mana at the end of this, too. <laughs> oh. oh! Oh! Yo! Moccasin oh, is poison. insane here! Stealth and poison? <laughs> Hello? How does Possessy do it? He got two poisons a while ago. Oh. Two natural poisons out of 15. And then there's Moccasin, which is a conditional poison. But wait, he played a minion oh. for... Wait, don't you... Possessy, you no! Possessy! Does he see it? He didn't react at all. Okay. I think he just read the card. <laughs> oh no you can't tell me he was not planning to trade with that i refuse to believe it it was a free kill on the flash giant i would not even dream of telling you that it has to still be one of the five drops right i think so i mean the downside is he can't composting but that's okay. I want f super cheap five drops. No Is he going annoyance on composting? He might be. Oh, no way, right? Is he not even playing annoyance on? I'm so confused by this turn. I don't know what is happening this turn, Gia. You end Greybow Squirrel right, surely. No, he's going composting. Okay, okay. Okay, and he's doing it before annoyance on so he doesn't overdraw. Not strictly wrong, but. Ah, uh, he just forgot, I think. Does he know now that oh, it's not poison? Why, what is that trade? He just forgot. He just forgot. He didn't see. He didn't see that it oh loses the little God. vial of green fluid icon. At the <laughs> Mate, that is embarrassing. This has just not been the day for Possessy. We've been hyping him up. The potential back-to-back -back oh. victories in both seasons here. And he's just having an absolute mare of it today. This is so <laughs> far off what we expect.
Oh my god. But how does Surrender capitalize? He's not out of the woods just yet. Like, obviously, the Soul Rand is amazing. His giant is yeah. alive at 8 1. And he gets to play <laughs> Baron Scavenger for one mana. That probably yeah. just ends the game, even if Possessi draws a heck of, of a lot of cards, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's the air conditioning. That's it, Possessi. Now we're back on form. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Okay. Playing tour guide first. Maybe he's trying to hit backfire and play another one, but this has to be a soul run turn, right? Maybe it doesn't. Uh, you just leave the like leave the battle guards, kill the Alun with the giant. Okay, fair enough. I guess you can deny them the card draw if they do have. They have to have a big five drop, which they quite clearly don't, or they would have played it right on the previous turn. <laughs> but Possessi still somehow just gets the good play here with double grey bow with the second Aloon. I, I am lost for words, Gia. I mean, Surrender is okay because he saved the Soul Ren. I'm starting to see now that the squirrels are coming out why Surrender didn't want to just Soul Ren. Like in the world where he does that, and a bunch of squirrels pop out because of the composting, which will draw Possessi more cards, then maybe Arbor Up gets scary again. I think he's just holding out for an even better Soul Ren, and that's what he will get. Absolutely. With, uh. Hmm. Not perfectly clean right because with the hero power now it means that uh one gray bow can survive and then i guess the second one would pass its death rattle onto the uh, the first one uh, so you really want to be able to go uh tap bristle back and then the soul rend but that's not a possibility it's all still a little awkward for surrender you're not telling me possessy still wins this no way <laughs> Okay, it's let's still very doable. Cards left for Surrend. Derek, you weren't supposed to tell me. No. <laughs> um, I I'm saying it. I'm telling you what you don't want to hear. Possessi might do it. There's a, a Drain Soul. That's a good one to get off of the tap. Unstable Shadow Bless. You don't actually want to kill a Grey Bow immediately. You just want to damage yeah. it so they can all die together to the Soul Rend. Um, dude, I didn't look at it for long enough. Show me again. <laughs> Another Mortal Coil works too. I think you're tapping either way because, like, yeah. even if you miss, you're still going to soul rend, right? And accept that one of the gray bow death rattles is going off. But I just want to find the better outcome, the shot of it. Oh, it's so close. Oh, he's leaving them both I guess go alive. soul rend first to leave them both alive and then just go. Oh, it's playing. Oh, he's going oh, double soul rend. Wow. Wow. Okay, this is the guaranteed clear. I didn't mention it because I thought it was too much commitment of resources. Like, Surrender yeah. is up. Like, he has double bristlebacks, but the upshot of it, obviously, is he keeps a giant. But is this enough? Possess, he has many taunts to stave off this giant for a long time. And he has four pack mules, and he chooses to play the cursed one. Come on, Possess. <laughs> He knows what he's doing. He's just taunting us at this point uh, as surrender on the following turn. Once we get the spectator oh, no. back, uh, we'll have a, uh, a multitude of very powerful plays of his own. Double scavenger, double bristleback is not necessarily game winning on the spot, but it is one heck of a powerful play. Okay. Yeah. And that play costs eight mana, so he can't weave in the tap. Surrender only has... Oh, I can't look at what's remaining because we had to reconnect for the pack mule thing. Hey. Yeah, yeah, I have absolutely no idea. I know that Battlegrounds Battlemaster was burned, which changes some maths for both players in terms of what they can go for, what Possessi is uh, afraid of dying to. But for this turn, there is one play and one play only. You play the most amount of stats, swing the board in your favor, and try to kill them next turn turn. I think it probably gets there at this point. This feels like a little bit too much for Possessi to overcome. But wow, was that a close one. There's a lot of taunts though. Oh, he's going Arbor up rather than Teacher's Pet. Sure, just buffing the taunts he has makes the Bristlebacks not able to take good trades, but Goldshire Knoll and Unstable Shadow Blast will push enough damage through to end the game. Oh, oh plus goodness. eight, yeah. 
That'll do it. Just about surrender takes the win. Going to another game five. We're already half an hour above schedule. This has already been the longest day by far of this season in APAC Grandmasters. And we are not done yet. One final game to find out who's going through to the semi-finals alongside Alan and who is sent home with no chance at the World Championships. Oh, I need to reset myself, recenter myself after that absolutely ludicrous game of Hearthstone. A nonsense play from Possessi halfway through there. And it's all going to end here with the Druid against the Demon Hunter. Oh, Possessi, pull it together, man! You're, we're sending you through yeah. the worlds already. Maybe that's, you can argue that's why he's not quite as focused <laughs> this weekend, oh. but man. This play, the replay of the Loon, and then the pause. But he didn't seem to notice because he still traded it into the Giant. I don't think he knew until he did the thing. He just didn't realize. I mean, to be fair, when it was the possibility of coming up earlier today, I did have to Google it because I always forget whether it's poison and gain stealth if it's the only minion or stealth and gain oh, yeah. poison. But to be fair, you can just mouse over the card when it's in play if you're unsure. And uh, yeah. I don't know, it, it has not been the best of days for Possessi as he came through with the, the advantage, the winner's advantage coming first into the uh, at the end of this season, at the end of the regular season. Uh, he only has to win one series of Hearthstone and in yet another game of five, he might fall down at the final hurdle uh, as it's going to be the Agro Druid once again. It's 0-2 so far for Possessi in this series against the Demon Hunter. And we've talked about how players feel like the Druid gives them a chance at targeting OTK Demon Hunter. But I've got to say, I'm just still not really a believer in the Druid. I think it's too fair in terms of what it does, whereas the Demon Hunter could just do the most broken of things. It's not what you were saying when I played Far Watch Post against you, Derek. <laughs> You're the exception yeah, that so proves the unfair. rule, okay? You hit Watch Post every game. There was nothing I could do. And I'm glad we brought this up because a while ago, Alan only had one copy of Watch Post. Not the true, not true for Possessi. He has two copies. Although he is presented with a one, two, three curve if he wants to keep that. Um, certainly above average, I would say. But I don't know if you just slam a loon on curve here. Maybe you assume it's protected by the Bone Chewer Brawler and go for it that way. But it's a full toss. <laughs> yeah. He is uh, almost all in uh, on finding that watch post as soon as possible. No worries. I'm uh, right there with you, struggling to speak with the, uh, the level of tension. Uh, he misses, though, and even though he gets a reasonable start, it's not necessarily the kind that can pressure Surrender enough, as I fully agree with the full keep here from Surrender. I think it's bang on with his ability to go uh, Quest plus Tusk Piercer on two, break it, Spectral Sight, Outcast position. Another Spectral Sight is premium here. This is a juiced hand for a Demon Hunter to start things off. I also love that Surrender starts with the studies rather than the quest here because you can do this if you feel that you are going to want to outcast the spell you discover from it or card you discover in the near future. And um, it does look like a matchup where you're very likely to dump the Ethereal Arcanist. So what you do by starting with the Illidari studies is you shift it, that discover card to the left by one more slot. If you wait the next turn to play it and go quest on one, then the card you draw on turn two can delay your discovered card from being outcast for a bit longer. True. Okay. Wow. Reasonable play still just to fill out the mana. Get yourself a 4-2 divine shield. Goody two shields. Eat your heart out. Okay. Surrender looking for fell scream, immolation. <laughs> so now you can go Wing, Coin, Arcanist, Fell Scream. You At trade birth? the weapon, trade the Rustrock Viper first, the right to complete quest, and then you. Ah, yeah. uh, you the thing just. I said? Yeah, I guess you just play all of it right with the discounted one mana Arcanist. Sounds. I still want to play the two cost here because I want to outcast the Spectral on the left next turn. So swing into oh. Divine Shield, Coin, Arcanist, Fell Scream. You recoup all the healing, because you're healing for nine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering if you would rather get a Moag on board, is my one line of thinking. But I guess the oh. fact that Park Panther fully clears them both off, I probably agree with your line. 
Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, my main reasoning for playing the expensive one is just to outcast the Spectral. I think he's 100% yes. doing that next turn, so I want to dump this um, Arcanist while it is getting value. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right with this play, and uh, Surrender clearly agrees. Possessi left with what looks like a pretty miserable hand. Mule plus a Noyatron, you do it, but I think you know it's not likely to work. Whereas for Surrender, the game plan continues very simply. Um, he could start double jump. Although you don't necessarily want to glide here. You can use glide and have it non-outcast by breaking the right. weapon after going d we uh, double right, jump. But I don't even know if that's worth it, right? Like the current hand is already pretty good in my opinion. Exactly, yeah. I don't want to play glide here. <laughs> Too bad, Dark. <Eric. laughs> <laughs> uh, double jump, swing. The problem is you kind of want to fit in a hero power on this turn just to actually clear something off. It's a pretty big deal in terms of denying an extra target for Arbor up. Right, so you can, like, Demon. Arcanist into Divine Shield, hero power, swing. That's a draw, trade the Peddler, and that's quest. Sure. I Sounds think good to me. That's pretty good. You can just save this double jump in hand for uh, Philosophy next turn if you want to. Having that buff of Moar can be pretty relevant in the matchup. Surrender's just going to kill the 2-3 rather than, than the Anoyotron, which is probably just better. It removes more damage from the board. Uh, Divine Shield, though, sometimes awkward, but Possessi really doesn't want to spend 2 mana on a hero power to get rid of the 1-1, one -one, so I like it. Yeah. I agree. It only really becomes a threat if Arbor Up comes down, and then, as you said, the hero power can't come in alongside it. So I think this is fine, given that the 1-1 one -one can quite happily take off the Divine Shield next turn. And then for Surrender, it's another turn where it's just going to be guaranteed quest completion at the very least if he wants to go Arbor Up. Uh, but very possibly he can just get there with uh, the double jumps, the Illidari studies, another spectral site. There's a lot going for him on this next turn again. Surrender could win on board, honestly. <laughs> if he hits the or a Fell Scream Blast, you could just play Morg Morg and say, deal with this. I mean, Park Panther is a thing, so obviously he's still trying to hold out for Ilganoth is better, but Surrender just has so many avenues to victory here, and Possessi, I think, is still forced on going for Arbor Up. You close your eyes because the trade is so... Or, or like, the, leaving the 1-1 one, one is so ugly, but he has to stick some minions for the composting. Okay, disagrees. He's just going composting on these two here. Preserves the Divine Shield at least. Yeah, I guess coming to the conclusion that Arbor up alone on this turn is not good enough, and he's going to need to hit that kind of hand we've been talking about every game, where it's the uh, Oracle of a Loon, the Battle Guard, and a 5-cost Torque yeah. to double play it. Ilganoth <laughs> off the top is kind of spicy. It's Getting to the point where just playing that down is pretty good. And so yeah. right now, as we were saying, just complete quest. <laughs> and that can come in the form of double I jumps or maybe something patient. off of the studies. Surrender has played only one oh. spectral side, I believe. So, yeah. Well, there's the other, yeah. I see. Okay, double Still jump has again. Eye beams right in the deck, so he has guaranteed draws off the other double jump. And eye beams actually pretty good, if nothing else, just to kill the peasant. Yeah, I agree. Kurtris in hand, big chilling. Surrender honestly could play Ilgen off the next turn and be fine. Yeah, fully agree. All right, that's one card draw for Possessi. He gets an Innovate, which is kind of interesting, uh, but not especially powerful here. Squirrel, that looks much more like it. Squirrel, Arbor Up, this is your board. You pretty much have to get there off the back of this alone because it's so likely to be cleared up on the following turn. And then, of course, your composting does next to nothing. And Surrender's safe to just Kurtris here because even if there's second Arbor up for Possessi in hand, um, it's only pushing plus 8 damage on what is currently 15 damage. So Surrender would be alive. Oh, I 
deep. Yes, you're right. Yeah, I'm just thinking, what happens if composting comes down? What happens if panther comes down? But even then, that means that arbor up isn't coming down. I yeah, guess you I'm are just, just safe. For a counter lethal. It's hard to say on turn seven because the Moargs and Ilganoth are already in hand. But yeah. like, if you're not killing them the next turn, all you need to do is find Immolation Aura or Fell Scream Blast, and that's essentially just winning by removing the board. So Kirchus also makes that easier, right? Because you can draw for cheap with the acrobatics. So Kirchus Sigil here is still a possibility. Yeah, I think he was just looking if anything insane comes off the. Uh... Outcast, probably I-Beam actually, was pretty much the only thing he would consider doing instead uh, of the Sigil and probably still end up on Kurtris. <laughs> mule, Mule composting. Okay, he can get a full hand even if the board is cleared, but for Surrender, I think the game plan right now is just saying, I don't care how many boards you make, you're just going to kill them before that matters. I hope we get the spectator fix as soon as possible because the upcoming turn for Surrender is very interesting. He'll be yep. at a health total where Arbor Up is lethal at this point. So he either needs to hit the Fell Screen Blast or the Emulation Aura to deal with the board. Um, and okay, he's already <laughs> drawn the Sigil and the normal draw. And he's got to go pretty quickly now. Like, you can just start with Glide if you want. You can go Moa Glide, I think, is reasonable as well, just to pre-bank the one mana while that's cheaper. Like, Moa, Tusk Piercer, plus Glide, but whatever it's going to be, Surrender needs to get moving. This board has to go. Yep. Moa, Moa Glide is where his head's at. The Acrobatic's simply too expensive here. Um, he could still Acro. Actually, yeah, I like I just Acro better. to do it now. Yeah, 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 I'm so anxious for Surrender. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is game five. Surrender, please, do something. Just I want go. Acro or, or Just the two go. Slide. You have to choose. Okay, Acro, Acro. <laughs> Demons. Fine, just play it, please, for the love of God. <laughs> ah, disaster. So he has to glide now to find Emulation Aura. Ooh. It can't land like this. It cannot end like this. There's no time, Derek. What if he has to draw more cards to find it? There's an acro in the deck still. Not it. Not it. Not Emo. No! No! Oh! It says he wins! He's lost! How? Oh my god, it's the final time that we are going to see Surrender on stream in Grandmasters. And this is how it ends. I cannot believe it, Gia. This is how it ends in thunderous applause, but <laughs> as he did it. Oh my gosh. Oh, this has been the messiest day for Possessi. I, I'm sure he's not happy with his performances. That is the way he goes through, but fair play. A win is a win, and we have to say congratulations to Possessi. The potential for a back-to-back -back victory in both seasons is still live, and hopefully after he takes a deep breath, meditates, whatever he needs to do to get his mental game in check before Sunday, we'll be seeing some cleaner Hearthstone from him again. We have to, of course, say goodbye to Surrender now. Having announced his retirement, that is the last time we're going to see him on stream in GM. I think he played his heart out this weekend. I liked pretty much everything we saw from him here. In the end, he was just unable to find the one piece of removal that he needed, one immolation aura, or even just a, uh, a fell screen blast in the end would have yeah. been enough, but he can't get there. Surrender takes the L and Possessi is going through to the semifinals. It has been a winding road to get here. A winding road full of litter because that was messy, <laughs> Derek. You put it perfectly. Possessi, yeah. I don't know what happened today. He pulled